gonna look at reduction formula. We're gonna try and simplify it. These are easy marks that you can get in a question paper. So we're gonna try and find an easy uh, way of getting them correctly. Right, the first thing that you must have, you must have your Cartesian paint. When you get this question in your question paper, draw your Cartesian paint first and write degrees. Here it's zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. Now, degrees are calculated anti-clockwise. When you calculate them anti-clockwise, like, like I've just done, you get positive degrees. When you're calculating, you get positive angles. When you're calculating um, and clockwise, like a watch, you get negative angles. So here, it will be zero. Here, it will be your negative 90. Here, it will be negative 180. And then here, it will be your negative 270. And then there, it will be negative 360. Now, what I want you to notice here is that 360 and negative 360, they are at the same place. 180 and negative 180, they are also at the same place. The difference is 90 and, and 270, right? This is the first thing that you write. The next thing that you write is all students take coffee. It depends how they taught you in your school. Um, different people using different codes. You write the code that you were taught uh, at school. Now... Then follow these steps. Step number one, you find the quadrant. When they say find the quadrant, in your question paper, they'll give it, they'll, you, you'll see when we do examples. You'll get your question and then you need to find where in the quadrant is that one. And then you write the sign, the sign relating to the ratio. Then you write the ratio. Then you write the acute angle. We're going to look at an example of how you do that right now. Let's look at an example. Right. Let's look at a, a few examples of how we reduce angles, right? The first thing, the Cartesian plane. Here, the A is for all, meaning that all the ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Now, the first quadrant is greater than 90, is greater than 0, less than 90. So if you have the answer, a, a number, like here, when you have a number that says 90 minus, it will be in the first quadrant. Second quadrant, the S is for sign. Only sign is positive in the second quadrant. The second quadrant is less than 180, smaller than 180, any value that is smaller than 180, but bigger than 90. Then we have the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, the T stands for tan. Only tan is positive in the third quadrant. The other trick ratios, the cos and the sine, are negative. So tan is greater than 180, meaning that a number that is 180 plus, um, or a number that is 270 minus. And then in the fourth quadrant, uh, a number that is less than 360, but bigger than 270, right? When you're using trig, uh, ratios, you need to find the quadrant first. So when you, when, 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 you, when you look at this one, this is my where my angle is. My angle is 180 plus, meaning that my angle is bigger than 180. So 180 is here. Any number that is bigger than 180 will be in the third quadrant. That's the first thing that you, you do. Uh, not to say find the quadrant, you find the quadrant. So this is in the third quadrant. After finding the quadrant, you look at the ratio. The ratio is cos. How is cos in the third quadrant? Cos is negative in the third quadrant. Then you write this, you write the sign. Cos is negative. How did I know that cos is negative? Because I found the quadrant is here and cos is not there. Only time is positive. So cos is negative. Then the next thing, I write the ratio. Whatever ratio you have, you write it. And then you write the angle. Then you're done. Right, let's look at another example. 360 minus a number that is smaller than 360 will be in the fourth quadrant. 360 minus fourth quadrant. Right, now I look at, I found the, the, the quadrant, my ratio. It's tan. How is tan in the third quadrant? Tan is negative. So I have negative, then I write my ratio, tan. After that, I write my angle. Right. Now, we want to move to this side. This side we are looking at when you are doing, when you are looking for angles that have been found clockwise, meaning negative angles. It's sine negative 180 minus. Okay, now you go and find where is negative 180. Negative 180 is in the same place as 180 here. Now, what about that? It's negative 
So it means a number that is smaller than negative 180. So it will be in the second quadrant. Now with negative angles, once you found where the, the, the negative um, rotation is, you, you no longer go negatively. You look at the quadrant as if you're going positive. It is negative 180 here. So when we are here, negative, you go to, it is smaller than uh, negative 180. So it is in the second quadrant. How is sine in the second quadrant? Sine is positive. It's the only ratio that is positive in the second quadrant. So you're going to write uh, positive. You don't write positive. And then you write the ratio is sine and then write your angle. Right. Now, let's look at tan. Negative 360. Where is negative 360? Negative 360 is here. But where do I go? Do I go positive or do I go negative? I go negative. It means I'm going to the fourth quadrant. So when I'm in the fourth quadrant, how is tan in the fourth quadrant? Tan is negative. The only positive thing is cos. Then I write the ratio. Then I write my angle. That's it. That's how you do reduction formula with um, the angles, positive angles and negative rotation. Now I want us to look at doing reduction formula with numerical values, meaning numbers. Let's look at that now. Right, we are going to look at numerical values of these angles. When we have sine 330, tan 250, and sine negative 120. Now, you have angles that are not acute angle. So how can you reduce them and make them acute angle? You're going to follow six steps. The first steps are the same like the one that we did before. You find the quadrant, you write the sign, you write the ratio. And then use 180 or 360 to reduce the angle. Unless you really have to use 90. Because 90 is a core function, it's going to change the cos and the time. So normally use 180 and 360. Now how do you use it? You subtract the smaller value. What do I mean by subtract the smaller value? You look at the angle and you look at the... Special angle. You look at the angle that you are given in the question, like here, you are given 360. And then the special angle, either 180 or 360. And then from the two, you choose which one is closer to 360. So you see, when you choose 180, you are still not going to get an uh, acute angle. So you need to use 360. But now, when you are using 360, I say subtract the smaller value from the bigger one. So you will have 360, subtract 320. Then you will get your acute angle and then the the acute angle that you get from the calculator then you write now let's do the example the first thing that they said we must find the quadrant 330 this is 270 360 330 is in the fourth quadrant how is sine in the fourth quadrant only cos is positive so sine is negative we've written the sign now we write the ratio the ratio is sine just write sine and then now we find the angle. Then you take your calculator. You say to yourself, which one, which one is bigger? 360, 360 is big. So you're going to have 360 minus 330. And then your answer will be 30. Then you found your acute angle. Then you've reduced the, the angle. Just like that. Let's look at another example. 10. 10, 225. Where is 225? Here is... 180, 270, 225 is in the third quadrant. Right, we found the quadrant. Now we write the sign. How is tan in the third quadrant? It is positive. So you normally don't write positive. And then you must write the ratio. Then you write the ratio. Tan. Then you take our calculator. Which one is bigger? Let me get my calculator. Which one is bigger? 225 and 180. 225 is bigger. So you're going to have 225 minus 180. Then in your calculator, you have the acute angle. So your acute angle is 45 degrees. Just like that. Done. Now here, this one is different because we have a negative angle. The rule for negative angle is that you are going clockwise. So this, when you have negative angle, you have to remember that cos negative angle is positive, sine negative angle is negative, cos tan negative angle is positive. 
So this is the first thing that you start with. Before you reduce the angle, you sort out the negative first. So cos negative angle is positive. So I'm going to have cos 125 degrees. After we have sorted that out, then we follow the, the, the step. Find the quadrant. 125 is in the second quadrant. How is cos in the second quadrant? Cos is negative in the second quadrant. Then I write negative. Then I write cos. Which one is bigger? 125 and 180. 180 is bigger. 180 minus 125 then I get 55 then I have cos negative cos 55 then that's how you reduce angles with numerical values ratios with numerical values this is the end of our lesson please take different examples these are easy marks that you can get in an exam thank you for watching